I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The kingdom of heaven has come near. In our gospel lesson from Matthew for this Sunday, we hear Jesus instruct the 12 disciples to go out and proclaim this message. And Matthew refers to the disciples here as apostles, literally ones who are sent. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And of course, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, as we hear in Mark and Luke, or eternal life, as we hear in John's gospel, that realm of heaven is not a physical place, but rather the state of God's sovereign and caring reign over God's good creation. Either way, it sure doesn't seem like it right now that the kingdom of heaven has come near. But these days, as scary and strange as they may seem, are not so far removed, at least in terms of collective anxiety, probably, from those in which Jesus sends out the 12 to proclaim that good news. It doesn't seem like it now, and it probably didn't seem like it then. When we meet Jesus and the disciples in the gospel lesson for this Sunday, they have been traveling through the towns of Galilee, where Jesus is healed and taught and exercised demons. And he has gathered a following proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom. And in today's gospel, he is met by crowds that we're told are harassed and helpless. And Jesus, having compassion for the people, asks the disciples to pray for laborers to minister to them. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Ask the Lord to send out laborers. Of course, what the disciples don't realize when they pray that prayer is that they themselves are the answer to that prayer. They and we are the answer to the prayer to bear God's love to the helpless and harassed. And the disciples, those Jesus chooses to proclaim this message, are remarkable only in the fact that they themselves are no less ha helpless and harassed. They are not impressive or well-known, and yet these are the ones Jesus calls to the most important work in this world, really the only important work, which is, in bearing, which, is in, which is bearing witness to the gospel, showing and proclaiming the love of God at all times and in all places. As Christian ethicist Stanley Howell says, the way the gospel is known is by one person being for another person the story of Christ. Jesus summons the disciples to him and so summoned they become for us the witnesses who make it possible for us to be messengers of the kingdom. The disciples are not impressive people, but then neither are we. Their mission, as well as our own, is not to call attention to ourselves, but to Jesus and the kingdom. The way the gospel is known is by one person being for another person, the story of the self-giving and all-encompassing love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. This was not then and is not now easy work. Jesus tells the disciples, and so us, I'm sending you out into a world where wolves parade around in sheep's clothing, where we can't really know who to trust, I'm sending you out. And accepting this call means that your friends and family, your own children and parents may well turn against you and you may end up dead. I'm sending you into chaos and I'm asking you to persevere and hold on to the gospel message that the kingdom has come near that the forces of sin and destruction and death that seek to hold sway over each and every one of us, the forces of sin and destruction and death that infect the powers and systems of this world and infect our own relationships with one another, 
Those forces are not now, nor have ever been the end of the story. In the meantime, hang in and keep going and keep making God's love known to all those you encounter. Avenge nothing and move on from those who don't want to hear, Jesus tells the 12, and so us. At the last general convention of the Episcopal Church back in 2018, presiding bishop Michael Curry proposed a sort of rule of life, a way of love, he called it. And you can Google uh, Episcopal Church and way of love and find resources and even a podcast there on the internet. And one of the things he challenged us to do was to live into our Lord's call to be sent to go. And by his definition, to go means to cross boundaries, listen deeply, and live like Jesus. This, of course, is grounded in Scripture and in Bishop Curry's own deep conviction about who Jesus is. In the sermon he delivered in 2015, after being elected presiding bishop, he said, quote, I am more and more convinced that God came among us in the person of Jesus of Nazareth to show us the way to be reconciled with the God who deeply and passionately loves each and every one of us, to be reconciled and right with that God, and to be reconciled and right with each other as the children of that one God who created us all. And he went on to say that in that is our hope and our salvation, now and unto the day of eternity. This is no doubt true, but if reconciliation with God, which necessarily means reconciliation with each other, is our hope and our salvation, why do we then find it so incredibly difficult? I think that in this story of Jesus sending out the 12, we get some understanding of why we are sometimes so resistant to that relationship for which we were created. It's important that Jesus sends out the disciples with nothing. Go heal, go confront evil, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, he says, but don't take anything. No money, no bag, just the clothes on your back and the sandals on your feet. This is hard to hear. Our ability to go, our ability to follow in the way of Jesus in the world, to cross boundaries and listen deeply, as Bishop Curry says, is completely dependent on our willingness to accept that the one who sends us has given us all that we need for the journey, everything. And all the other things that we cling to, whether that be our stuff, or those tightly held convictions that make us unable to hear the voices of those around us who are hurting, especially the voices of those we tend to dismiss, especially the voices of those that cause us to bristle in defensiveness and lash out in anger. Those ideologies that we cling to are the very things that prevent us from right relationship with God and thereby right relationship with one another. We have all that we need for the journey into the world to answer Jesus's call to the disciples and so to us to enter into the chaos and live and love as Jesus himself did. We have all that we need. And that is the assurance that God desires all of us and is with us through the power of God's spirit. There's nothing else. These past weeks, as we've seen our nation and the world reeling from the effects of centuries of systemic racism, those of us who've been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection do well to remember that God is sovereign. And no matter what the world looks like ever, God's kingdom has indeed come near. And the full revelation of that kingdom is drawing ever nearer. And while my desire is sometimes to push God away, and certainly to push away those whose voices I sometimes cannot bear to hear, 
The very good news of the gospel is that the hard work of reconciliation has already been done on the cross and for all times Jesus Christ has reconciled and is reconciling all things to God. We have been given not a teacher or a prophet or a role model, but a much needed savior in Jesus Christ. Our calling and our work then is to participate in the transformative work of God in the world to participate in God's overflowing love for us and for all that God has made. Our call and our work is to go, to go, to cross boundaries, to listen deeply, and to participate in the great gift of our salvation. Amen. Thank you.